So what are plexiform neurofibromas? Plexiform neurofibromas are one of the most complex uh, and difficult aspects of neurofibromatosis type 1. These are benign tumors uh, that can develop uh, anywhere in the peripheral nervous system from the spinal roots out to the periphery. Um, they are uh, basically hyperproliferative Schwann cells as well as infiltrating uh, immune cells such as uh, mast cells uh, and fibroblasts. Uh, and these tumors usually extend along long lengths of nerves or coalesce around groups of nerves uh, such as the brachial plexus or the lumbosacral plexus. So where do plexiform neurofibromas develop? Plexiform neurofibromas can really develop anywhere in uh, the peripheral nervous system, uh, arising from uh, paraspinal lesions uh, on the spinal roots all the way out into the periphery. Um, their clinical manifestations are really dependent on where the tumor develops. So if they have a superficial component, there's often skin changes overlying the tumor, such as thickened skin, uh, thickened skin or hyperpigmentation uh, or increased hair growth. Um, but tumors can also develop internally uh, without any superficial manifestations and may be found only on the basis of uh, feeling an underlying mass uh, or based on clinical symptoms or based on uh, uh, imaging findings. So even though plexiform neurofibromas arise from nerves, they can impact other organ systems, often through direct impact uh, physically on those organs uh, and sometimes through invasion. So sometimes, for instance, a plexiform neurofibroma can develop intra-abdominally and sometimes those tumors can involve the intestinal wall. Um, they might also involve the, the wall of the bladder. Um, when they grow in and around the face or the neck, they can impact uh, uh, blood vessels, uh, the trachea or the esophagus. Um, but again, it's primarily through a direct physical impact on those organs uh, and vital structures as opposed to direct invasion. Plexiform neurofibromas are very complex tumors and as a result of their complexity, they're often very difficult to remove surgically. They are highly vascular tumors, uh, so surgery can often result in excessive bleeding. Also, the way these tumors grow within nerves essentially necessitates sacrifice of a nerve to remove the tumor. So any nerve that the tumor is growing on will often be injured at the time of, of surgery and the function of that nerve lost. The way these tumors uh, grow, they often insinuate themselves uh, around and into adjacent structures and organs. Um, again, making surgical resection uh, very difficult, and it's almost impossible to resect these tumors uh, completely. How do we determine if these tumors are, are inoperable or not? Uh, it's, it's a difficult issue, and we're often weighing the risk of resection with the potential benefit to the patient. And the tumors that I would consider inoperable are the ones where there is going to be risk of significant neurologic impairment, um, worse than the symptoms that the patient is already experiencing, uh, or uh, tumors that put the patient at too much risk of uh, blood loss or injury to adjacent vital structures. Our choices around surgery with the advent of, of new medical therapies is uh, certainly changing. Um, I do think that there is a role for debulking of these tumors in certain situations particularly where a, uh, a limited surgical procedure can provide a patient immediate uh, and safe benefit, um, either cosmetic or functional. Um, I think over time, we will better be able to ascertain how much medical therapy will replace some of the surgical procedures that we've done in the past. Um, but I do think that at this point, there's still a role for both.